Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. If it's your first time here, then as always, it is good to see you and I hope you're gonna stick around. Okay, well, welcome to our midweek video. As you can probably tell, it's another studio video this midweek. I'm still lucky to get back out in the field. As those of you who have been following the channel will know that we normally look to upload a video midweek, normally on a Wednesday, and a video on the weekend, normally on a Saturday. And weekend videos are always studio videos, normally look at all things Airsoft, that could be gear reviews, tech, replica reviews, and everything in between about our great hobby and sport that is Airsoft. Um, midweek videos are normally gameplay and, you know, follow-up tests for gear I've looked at in the field, showing me using it in the field. But as you may have known, I have been injured for a while, so I've not been able to get out in the field. But hopefully, that is going to be changing shortly. I'm looking to get back to my first Airsoft game at the beginning of May, going to a three-day event at my home site here in the Scottish Highlands, Tasbol Airsoft. So, we should get the gameplays back up and running from there. So, with that out of the way, if you have been enjoying my series of videos and you've been sticking with me while I've not been in the field, then thanks very much for your support. And if you aren't subscribed already, then do get subscribed to the channel and then that way you won't miss any of my uploads. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at today? Well, today I thought we'd look at another affordable item uh, and that is magazines. Now, magazines are very important. <laughs> Can't do much without your magazine in Airsoft. And they come in all shapes and sizes. I did previously do a video uh, that was just examining different Airsoft magazines, having a look at what was available out there, and generally what all the terms meant on magazines. So today, what we'll do is we'll have a look at a particular magazine. Now these magazines that I'm looking at are AR magazines. So for M16, M4 style replicas. And they are mid cap magazines. If you saw my previous video, you'll know all about that, but mid-cap is generally around about 100 to 150 rounds, and you don't have to wind them. A high-cap magazine, you have to wind it up, and they can rattle about a lot like your tactical maracas. <laughs> so mid-caps, uh, a lot of people will swear by mid-caps. I like mid-caps. They give you the good in between. A low-cap will normally have the same sort of ammo count as a real steel magazine, um, which in Airsoft, if you're doing a, a military simulation or something like that, that might be for you. Uh, but in general skirmishing, it's better to have a few more BBs on hand. So, I want to have a look at affordable M4 style mid caps. And I'm going to show you two of my favourite style of M4 mid cap. Two of my favourite brands as it were. Now, I did a previous video on the Battle Axe... Um, drum magazine for ARs, you might have seen that one, if not I'll put a link in the description to that one. And there were some drawbacks to that, but I did mention at the time it didn't put me off Battle Axe magazines in general, because these are Battle Axe mid caps. Now these magazines are unbelievably affordable uh, for what you get, because for me they function brilliantly. And they're very affordable. You can pick up one of these style of Battle Axe mid cap magazines. Here in the UK, they're round about nine British pounds or just under. So for nine British pounds, you can get yourself one of these Battle Axe mid caps. They come in black and they also come in tan. Um, they do look very similar to other brand magazines you may have seen in the market, such as PTS, and I think New Pro made one like this as well that looks similar. They do different designs. They have like a hex mag design and things like that, but the, the overall workings of the magazine should be just the same. Now, for nine British pounds, that's not a huge amount of money for a mid-cap magazine. If you're in the States, they were a little bit harder to find, uh, but I did manage to find prices for these Battle Axe mid caps ranging from between eight to $15 US. Um, a lot of the ones I could find there were more based for the Tokyo Marui next gen recoil rifles, but they were still Battle Axe mid caps. So do a search around, maybe you have a local supplier that can get hold of these for you if you fancy some. So these magazines are great. The first thing to consider is that they hold 150 BBs, 150 rounds, so quite a, a fair number for a mid cap, round about average, usually what they would tend to hold. Um, they're made out of polymer, uh, they are predominantly all polymer, 
<laughs> it's a good quality feeling polymer though. They don't feel cheap. They feel decent, which is always good to know. Uh, they have the mock window with the dummy rounds in there. But you, as I say, you can get them in different styles. So you don't have to get them with this window and the dummy rounds in there. One thing that they do have, which is a nice touch, is if you can see the top of the magazine there, it has a clear window on the top. So when you're loading your BBs in with your speed loader, unless of course you're using an Odin style speed loader, but if you're using a traditional style speed loader, you can physically see when the magazine is full because they will wind round into this window, which is quite handy when you're loading in the field. Unless, as I say, you use an Odin style loader and that's going to cover that up anyway. But it's pretty cool. You can also make out the window on the side here. Um, so you, you can see as your BBs feed in. Now they are very tough. These are two of my Battleaxe Midcap magazines. These have been used in the field loads of times. Absolutely loads of times. They've been dropped, they've been bashed about, they've been loaded and unloaded many, many, many times and they're still going strong, the springs are still strong in them, they still work fine. One of the touches that's nice about them, they have like this kind of rubberized bottom on them, which protects them a bit if they should drop out of your rifle. As I say, the polymer doesn't feel brittle, it feels nice, strong, and reasonably flexible. Um, so I mean, yeah, quality-wise, they feel great. They are tough, I know they're tough, because the ones I've used in the field, They've never let me down and I have yet to break one. So from that point of view, for nine British pounds, they're great. The only drawback I have had with these Battle Axe mid caps is feeding. On the whole, they feed great. I've not had any issues with these feeding on any of my standard replicas running on a 7.4 volt or 11.1 volt LiPo battery. However, on my high speed builds, or indeed if you have a replica that's running high speed, these can struggle to keep up. I've had issues particularly with this one here. Uh, on my 12 to 1 gear set build, this one did struggle to keep up. So it will feed fine on semi, but as soon as you go into full auto, you'll get the odd blank round if you like. You'll get the odd miss feed and you'll only be firing out a couple of shots and then you'll miss a shot. It struggles to keep up on full auto with high street high speed builds. But on everything else I have, on any kind of standard setup, these feed absolutely fine. So if you're not running insane rates of fire, then these will feed without missing a beat. But for you guys out there that have replicas that are firing a particularly high round count, or if you've modified any of your replicas to be really high round counts, then these affordable mid caps may not be for you because, as I say, they can miss a beat when they're on full auto with very high rounds per second. But for a standard replica, for any AR standard replica, they're great. As I say, 150 rounds, they're tough, they're well made, they have that nice clear window on the top so you can see them loading, and they've never let me down for gameplay and they've been bashed about all over the place. So I can certainly recommend those. So that's a Battleaxe magazine that is worth buying for me. Um, for the money you pay, you'd think you were getting something that would feel cheap, that would feel badly made, but they're not. They really feel solid and they do work. So definitely one of my favorite budget mid caps. Now that then brings me on to my next favorite budget mid cap and that's these ones. This one is a bit more of a traditional Stanag style looking magazine. These are Nuprol mid caps. The Nuprol mid caps, uh, these particular ones are full metal. Um, so the, the top section here where you have your extended follower is plastic. However, the rest of the externals of the magazine are metal, full metal. So they do look the part, they look nice in your replica. I have no issues with these fitting in any of my replicas. Various brands, these are fit and locked in no problem. I should also mention I've had the same with these Battleaxe mid caps. No fitment issues. They'll fit in every replica I currently own AR style. That's by various brands and they fit in no problem. They'll lock in every time. Same for these new Pro ones. They're a good solid fitment. Um, one of the advantages, again, of the new Pro one is that it's metal. The price of these is a little bit higher. 
I don't know whether that's because they're metal or just because of the way they're made, but they are a little bit more expensive. These ones, you can get hold of those here in the UK for around about 11 British pounds for the new Pro mid caps. However, I did struggle to find the new Pro mid caps in the States. So I am sorry, I, I struggled to get a price on these ones over in the States there. These you can get, the new Pro ones, I struggled to find them in stock anywhere. So with that in mind, 11 British pounds is what you'd pay here in the UK. Now these have a fancy trick up the sleeve. If you remove this bottom plate, you can see this little arm key there. This bottom plate slides over and underneath there you have a switch and you can slide the guts of the magazine out if you like flick the switch and you can flick the switch between 30 which would be a low cap or 140 which is your mid cap so these magazines are suitable to use for mil sim or military simulation if you want to have the same round count that a real ar firearm would have um, however, if you're wanting to play skirmishing, like I do, and you want the extra capacity, you can flick the switch to 140, and this will act as a mid cap. So you've got a low cap and a mid cap in one, which is a nice feature, and it does work, I've tried it, but 140 rounds-ish is what these mid caps will hold for skirmishing. As I say, they're really well made. Um, they're solid, they feel quite heavy with being full metal. They do do a polymer version of this. I haven't used it myself yet. Um, all the ones I have, which I have a lot of these, are by Nupro. So the pollen one might be slightly lighter, I'm not sure. Um, but they, they are really well put together. They feel solid. Again, these have been bashed about in the field. Uh, they've had all sorts of abuse of me because uh, I've had some of these for quite a number of years and I still haven't had to replace the springs or stretch the springs in the magazine. They've been fine. Another feature is this extended mag follower here. Uh, the idea of that is it's supposed to feed every last one of the BBs into your hop, which on some magazines you can have an issue that when you drop the magazine, a number of BBs will drop out the hop chamber, which still happens with these, to be fair. Um, and you'll maybe have a couple of BBs left in the magazine. Not always, but sometimes. But the idea of these extended followers is that you don't have that. Every last BB is going to be fed into your replica. So it's a, it's a nice feature. It's a nice touch. Now, the, the uh, feeding of these magazines is... I, I've never had issues with these feeding. Uh, these are fed remarkably well in the vast majority of replicas that I've encountered with them. Um, my replicas, they all feel, feed fine in my AR replicas. Some of the guys that I play with, some of my friends at Tazball Airsoft have used these as well. Most of them, in most replicas, have found them to feed absolutely fine. I think it's been the odd exception. I can't think what particular brands, but it's very rare to have a feeding issue with one of these. Now, what I've also found is, is that these new Pro mid caps can keep up with my high rate of fire builds. So the ones that have a high round per second count, these can keep up. I've never had one of these give me a misfeed on my 12 to 1 build or my 16 to 1 builds or any of the builds that I use 11 1 with or high speed gears, these have always managed to, to keep up with feeding. So for 11 British pounds, they're a superb budget magazine. So there we go. Um, I mean, you know, different looks. You can get all these in different designs, as I say. I will put a link in the description to where you can get one of these ones in metal. I'll also put a link in the description to where you can get the Battle Axe range of magazines. I did notice that stocking as is a lot of the case at the moment, does seem to be an issue. Uh, but they will be the same magazines, but you may be going to be able to get hold of them with a slightly different design. But I'll put a link in the description where you can get the Battle Axe magazines. I'll also put a link in the description where you can get hold of some of these new Pro magazines. And as I say, if you're on a budget, if you're looking for an affordable magazine, then these magazines won't let you down. These magazines will feed fine. They should last you a long time and they should be able to stand up to the abuse of skirmishing. And that's why I thought I'd do a quick video looking at budget mid cap magazines that I use. These magazines are all available as high caps as well, should you prefer. But my experience with them as high caps is limited because I tend to use these mid cap ones. So there you go. If you want any of those, as I say, there'll be a link in the description. If you have any questions about these magazines 
Airsoft in general, any questions for myself, then do drop a comment below. I'll always respond to a comment. I might not get back to you straight away, but I will always respond. If you want any more content from the channel, you can find Rock Bottom Airsoft on Facebook and Instagram. There's pictures and things on there. And as I said earlier, if you are enjoying my series of videos, then please do get subscribed to the channel and then you won't miss any of my uploads. And finally, if you liked this video, if you enjoyed it, if you found it useful, then please do drop a like on there because it helps me out. And finally, thank you very much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.